Hey, what's going on, True Blazer fans? It's Monday, so that means I'm coming at you with the Monday mailbag. Now, this will probably, hopefully, be dropping in the middle of this Washington Wizards game. Hopefully, we can pull out this W tonight. Hopefully, it'll drop before halftime, so maybe it might give you guys a little something to watch during that halftime break. Before we get into this mailbag, got a couple things to get out of the way, like I normally always do. First off, gotta give a shout out to Myers Legend. That was his Patreon name at least and he pledged to us on patreon so thank you for that and also thank you to mr garza who also pledged to us on patreon as well thank you guys for the support our patreon link is down in the description below in the future we're gonna try and provide perks so that we're able to give back to you guys to make it a win-win scenario but right now we can't promise anything we might not come up with anything you know it's all fluid so don't donate expecting anything from us in the future just know that we are trying to give back to you guys for that. Follow me on Twitter at ToryJonesYT and follow TrueBlazerFan on Twitter at TrueBlazerFan. TrueBlazerFan just hit a thousand followers on Twitter, so that's a cool milestone to hit. So with that being said, let's jump into today's mailbag. The first question is from Insidious Swede, and just paraphrasing his questions, he's asking how Alan's holding company, Vulcan, is going to affect our ability to make moves. He notes that they're not interested in owning the team, so that there's people believing that the bottom line is the top priority for them. I don't think they'll affect anything in the short term, I think they're trying to sell it. I think that you're talking about a difference in tens of millions of dollars and honestly to an owner buying the team I don't think that's gonna matter at all to the Vulcan company given that they're Paul Allen's business I don't think tens of million dollars are going to matter to them at all either I mean it matters but not enough to really affect the way the team's being ran so I don't think it's going to affect any of our moves or at least I hope it doesn't GG snubs asks if you could do one of these three things which one would you do fire Stotts, fire Olshe, or somehow just dump Myers Leonard in his contract. Right now I wouldn't do any of them. Stotts has actually encouraged me more than ever before with the way that he's using the second unit, they're moving the ball. He actually threw double teams at LaMarcus Aldridge a couple nights ago. He looks like he's finally doing some of the things that I wanted from him. Olshe, I think Olshe might have possibly redeemed himself a little bit this offseason. I like our draft picks. And Stauskas, while I didn't like the signing, he looks like he could be a bargain. It's also too late to fire him, so I wouldn't fire him now. And Dump Myers Leonard, there's just no point to right now. He's actually been solid in the preseason in the first two games of the year. So I don't see a reason as to try and dump his contract. And there's no teams outside of Sacramento that have the salary space to absorb his contract. So I wouldn't do any of those three things. Definitive one back again. Number one, do we have enough grit, toughness, fire, slash fight, whatever you want to call it? Or are we too focused on guys being squeaky clean? Can we win a title like that? I think we have enough grit. Zach Collins is definitely gritty. CJ McCollum is a little gritty too. He talks and chirps a lot. Nurkic is physical. Al Farouk Aminu is a good defender who plays hard. I guess I don't really understand what you mean by grit or toughness. I think we're a pretty tough team. I do want to see us play with more emotion. So that could be what you're talking about as well. I do think we need to play with a little bit more emotion. Get a little bit more pumped up. But during the first two games of the season, you know, we were playing with a lot of emotion. So that's just something that I've seen that's lacked in previous seasons. I don't know. That's probably a bad answer to that question. I don't really know how to answer that. Second part, last year there were whisperings about Lamar Saldridge wanting to return home. I still think he had his best years here by far. Would you welcome him back as the power forward with our current core? Would Collins be on the table in this scenario or no? Um... No, I wouldn't put Collins up in a trade for LaMarcus Aldridge. Aldridge is 33, I believe. He's aging. He had one good year for San Antonio, but honestly, his years here, he wasn't that efficient. He did demand a lot of double teams, but considering how his personality has clashed with Dames before, I mean, maybe he's matured in that area, but he definitely caused some locker room issues when he was in Portland that nobody really heard about. I don't know. He'd probably make our team better in the short run, but... I wouldn't try and make a move right now. I just keep it as it is and maybe look around the trade deadline for a guy like Otto Porter. I think Aminu is fine as our starting power forward, just as a defender. I do think we need to upgrade one of those forward spots. I just wouldn't do it with Lamarcus Aldridge. I think we need a three point shooter to spread the court for Damon CJ. Jerry Malgoza asks, who do you think is going to buy the team? There's only so many billionaires in the Pacific Northwest that can fork over a billion dollars comfortably. 
Phil Knight, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Steve Ballmer. Well, Phil Knight, it'd be a conflict of interest because Nike has a deal with the NBA, so I don't even think it's actually legally possible, just based on the way the NBA runs, for Phil Knight to be an owner of a team. But I also don't think he'd do it. He's 80 years old. He, it's kind of too late for that. Jeff Bezos, Bezos. See, I don't even know how to say his name, so I don't know enough about him at all. Bill Gates. It would be cool to see Bill Gates buy this team, but I don't think Bill Gates is interested. Uh, he's not really as much of a sports guy as Paul Allen was, so I don't see that happening. And Steve Ballmer owns the Clippers, so I don't think that's happening either. I think it's going to be an outsider. I think it's going to be somebody not from the Pacific Northwest, but I don't think the team's going to move. The Bredenator asks, what do you think Wade Baldwin's ceiling is, and which bench player are you most surprised at? I don't think Wade Baldwin's ceiling is as high as many people think. I just think he's a tweener of a guard. You have guys like CJ McCollum who can play point guard and shooting guard, so they're a combo guard in a good way. Wade Baldwin, I think he's a combo guard in a bad way because he can pass the ball, but his ball handling and his ball control and his ability to get the team into the offense is very, very lacking for a point guard. And then as a shooting guard, he's not a good enough shooter. He's a little bit undersized. So I don't think he has that high of a ceiling. I think it's very likely that we let him walk after this season after he doesn't play much. Which bench player am I most surprised at? I'm not really surprised at anybody because I knew Nick Stauskas could hit shots. So that game against the Lakers, it was very fun, but it wasn't super surprising. That one spin movie out on Kyle Kuzma was surprising, but other than that, he didn't really surprise me. I've been expecting big things as at Collins, so him playing well over two games, that's not surprising either. I guess I'd have to say Myers Leonard, because he's actually doing the little things here and there, which he's never seemed to be able to do. He had surprisingly good defense on Brandon Ingram in a possession in that Lakers game where he moved his feet and kept Ingram in front of him and then contested the shot and looked like it was a good contest. He was straight up, but they called a foul. I guess I'd have to say Myers Leonard, but in all honesty, nobody's really surprised me that much. Benjamin Heron says, why does Nurkic not get brought up in trade talks for the future and what do you think we could get for him? Disclaimer, I would prefer keeping him, just curious. Well, Nurkic was expiring this offseason, so we couldn't trade him this offseason unless it was a sign and trade. So that's why he didn't get brought up this offseason. Now we can't trade him till either December 15th or January 15th. I think it's January 15th, and that's just because he just signed his deal, so we can't trade him for a certain amount of time. Also, a lot of teams are set at center. The center position has improved a lot over the past few years. So I don't think any team's looking to trade for Yusuf Nurkic, but with Zach Collins looking pretty good in the future, I wouldn't be surprised to see Portland shop Yusuf Nurkic just to try and open up that starting center spot for Zach Collins, who fits this modern NBA game a lot more than Nurkic does because Nurkic is more matchup dependent. So you haven't heard much about trade rumors with Yusuf, but don't be surprised if you hear about them in the next couple of years. Corbin McCollum says, do you see us finishing top five again? I definitely do. I said fourth seed with 47 wins at the beginning of the season, which is a low win total for a fourth seed, but I think everybody will be bunched up. But I do think we'll win enough games to get home court advantage. After these first two games, I could honestly see us winning around 50 games and getting possibly the three seed, but I definitely do think we'll be top five. OKC looks bad. Minnesota just lost to Dallas without Jimmy Butler, so they're not good without him and with him. He causes a lot of drama and strife. So I don't think they'll be much of a challenger. Denver looks really good. Their defense, I think, has been the best in the NBA. And they've been a horrible defense in years past. So if they're able to put it together defensively and keep this up, they're going to be a team that's going to be very, very hard to pass. Of course, you got the Jazz. You got the Pelicans that looked really good against Houston on opening night. So for the three through six seeds, it's going to come down to us, Utah, Denver, as well as New Orleans. I think we'll get top five, though. So anyway, thank you guys for all your questions. I hope you enjoyed today's Monday mailbag. Tomorrow night, I will have a day after recap for this Washington Wizards versus Portland Trailblazers game. I hope you guys are enjoying those. So with all that being said, this has been Tori. Peace out, True Blazer fans. Go Blazers.